Hey guys, Party Waffles here. So what you're seeing beside me right now is the Gladiator Mount for Season 1 Shadowlands. And as you can tell, it looks pretty badass. So I'm here today to teach you 5 tips that are going to help you improve to push Gladiator in Shadowlands. So stay tuned. Okay, starting with tip number 5. The f number 5 is... Stop blaming others, okay? So I know it's so easy. You lose a game. Instead of looking at yourself critically, you just want to look at your partner. Oh, but my partner didn't juke this kick, so we lost because of that. But I want you to erase that mindset, okay? I learned, th I learned this mindset from playing League of Legends back in the day. So instead of thinking why your partner lost the game for you, you want to think about what you could have done differently to carry the game harder because the odds are if you're stuck at low rating you're making many mistakes so it can the game is not being decided by one simple mistake that your partner's partner's making because if you were really so good that you weren't making any mistakes you could easily carry the game a lot higher rating than what they are so instead of so instead of focusing on the mistakes Focusing on improving yourself and critical thinking about yourself is what you want to do, okay? If your partner, if you keep doing that and you can never progress with your partner and they make simple mistakes like, oh, they, it's a monk and they didn't cocoon seven games in a row. Okay, it's their fault. If you're dying with, if dying, your partner's dying with cooldowns alive every game. Okay, it's their fault. But don't look at the simple things like that. L like, look at what you can do, right? Like, oh, maybe if you had have landed that other kick there, you would have ended the game earlier. And the there wouldn't have been all those chances for your partner to make more mistakes, right? Like me, like when I'm playing with lower rated players, you can capitalize on the enemy's positioning, things like that, very easily. Like, uh, say the other game was fighting a warlock. And the warlock gated out of line of sight of his healer while the healer was across the map and it was a priest so he had no mobility in the first place so the warlock was already really badly positioned and then I just grip him into an even worse position and there's a zero percent chance that they're ever gonna connect to each other and we just one shot him with reef trust so things like that like focus on yourself because after you watch this video you're gonna know a bunch of other things that you probably didn't even think about in the first place but that's Another thing, another thing building on top of that is b blaming LFG, okay? Everyone wants to blame LFG, but you want to know something funny? So I just started playing WoW again. I made this new account in BFA Season 3, near the end of the season, okay? And you want to know a fun fact? I had zero BFA friends, zero BTAG friends, zero partners, and you know what I used? Looking for a group. And you want to know something funny? I got 2800 rating with looking for group before even finishing my glad wins. How is this possible, you might ask? Well, LFG is actually not bad. Want to know another fun fact? I used partners that I met in LFG that didn't have experience. And I, you know what? I played with them this season and we got 3000 experience. Because LFG is not the problem. You use it's the way you're using LFG. So this is how this is how I did it, okay? This is how exactly how I did it. So I started I had zero XP, right? Zero XP on this account. So I couldn't get all the good players that I needed to play with usually. So like like I normally would, right? So what I did start in two V two. Play LFG two V twos and then just keep playing with people that are near near your rating or higher and keep pushing, right? Just keep pushing until you you just have to go through people until you find someone that's willing to take constructive criticism. Because if you are as good at the game as you think you are, and you should be higher rating, but it's LFG holding you back, well then, coach the person you're with in LFG. Just tell them what to do. Tell them how to play. Because some people in LFG are actually willing to push, and they are receptive, and they want to learn. So, LFG is not the problem. If you have that mindset, you need to erase that too. Because I got 2,800 with LFG last season from zero XP. And I got 3K this season with LFG again. 
with people that had low XP. One of them, at least. But, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's just another excuse, by the way. All right. Tip number four. Okay, number four is to focus on one thing first. So I'll explain that to you. I, I go over this on my stream a lot when I'm doing with lower rated or when I'm coaching lower rated players. So by focusing on one thing, I mean learning one thing at a time, okay? So say you're a healer, all right? You're a healer. I noticed this with a lot of healers last season. So you're a healer, say like a paladin, okay? And you wanna play aggressive and push in and do damage and then you wanna heal and you wanna try to make plays and set, set everything up. But the thing is, if you're lower rated, you can't do all those things at once yet, okay? You, I, so many times I see this happen. Someone will be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to CC this guy. And then they push in and put themselves in a horrible position where they just get spam CC'd four times in a row and we lose the game because of it. When it's like, all they needed to do was sit there and heal and just actually do healing in the back. That's all they had to do. So not only does it put yourself in a bad position where you throw the game by getting CC'd over and over, also it affects your healing output because I find the lower rated players, they can't do multiple things like once, like they, they're not, how do I put, how do I word this for you? If you just can, if you can just PVE heal, like you're in a mythic raid, if you can just do your rotation and PVE heal with maximum output and stay in the back and just do that and just heal, maybe just press a hodge or something once a, once in a while on cooldown. If you just passively heal in the back, you can get 2400 in 2v2s just from doing that. Your DPS can do the rest. All you have to do is heal, not go oom, and stay alive, okay? So before you wanna learn how to play aggressive and learn when, when it's worth to go for CC and play like super aggressive and all that kind of thing, first know how to heal, okay? It, it's the same with DPS. Before you're trying to do all these crazy, make these plays and everything, learn how to do damage first if you're a DPS, okay? Learn how to do your rotation so good that you could mythic raid with it. Because the, the funny thing is about twos, threes is slightly different, but the thing about twos is that just by your healer, maximum PvE healing, and just by your DPS, maximum PvE DPSing, you guys are already like pretty much there. You're already there. The only other thing you gotta in add in is kicking the right things and CC chains. But honestly, to get 2400, you don't even need CC chains in twos. That's like, if you just do damage, maximum damage, maximum healing, and you push your CC, even if you just push your CC randomly, you just use your asphyxiate on cooldown or your hodge on cooldown. As long as you're not DRing it every single time, then that's all it takes really. So threes is where it takes, so I would, Practice that in twos first. Learn your rotations in twos, your PVE DPS rotation and your healing rotation. Learn those in twos until you have them perfectly perfected. After you have those perfected and it's like not even a thought to you anymore, then focus on the CC chains, focus on making, then you can start trying to learn how to make plays. Because I, I swear to God, nine out of 10 times that some I'm with a low rated player and they try to make a play like a druid, he'll be like, all right, I'm going for a clone. And he'll clone all my damage. Like, I have all my CDs out and he'll clone the target and then negate all my offensives. Or, like, we'll fall behind because of it. Or he'll, like, a pally will go for some sort of rep or something. And then he'll be sitting in the middle of the map and he'll just get feared into something, something, into something. And it's like, I can't stop them all for him. And then, so, yeah, that's, that's one thing. Focus on one thing at a time. Learning one thing at a time. That's, that's tip number four for you guys. Okay, tip number three. So you want to, it's kind of building on the last one, right? So this one is play the same comp so that you can learn it. So last, se so my first glad was with Walking Walking Dead, Windwalker, DK, Mistweaver. So that was the first comp I learned, right? And you know what? That's the comp that I played this season for my first 3000. Because You know why I did that? Because I know the comp. So that's what you want to do. You want to, Find, so after you've learned how to play your class in twos, you found the people that you 
that are receptive, that want to learn, that take constructive criticism while giving you criti criticism that you can learn from as well. You found the people, you found the, you found your whatever. You just want to find your comp now, okay? So me, for me, it's Windwalker DK Mistweaver or Windwalker DK Arsham, any form of Windwalker DK. That was my bread and butter comp, okay? That and Ret DK. But so you want to find your comp and then the thing, the reason I say to play one comp at first is just to get Gladiator with is because you need to learn every strat. So there's a lot of comps, right? And you need to know the strat to beat every comp. Okay. Once the more you play that comp and then you know how to play versus every single team, you know what to do. You know which talents to choose. You know everything, right? You might not know everything by then you would already be ranked one if you knew everything, but you will know enough to get Gladiator, especially the new 2400 Gladiator. If you just play the same comp with the same people, then you will get it easy. Because the thing is, if you're playing with the same people, you're going to get synergy, right? So this is why I play with the same people usually. Because if you're playing with different people and then, oh, buddy doesn't, the new guy you got, he doesn't know the comp and then he doesn't know the strats and you got to lose a bunch of games until he figures it out. And then, so it's like, if you just play with the same people and you can just grow with each other and learn from each other and that kind of thing, then it's nice. And it's a lot more fun too, because you guys can become friends and it's like a good time along the way, right? So I definitely think that at first, like sure, th there is benefits to playing with other people, right? You can learn other strats. You can learn a lot of different things from playing with a lot of different other people. It's definitely, you should like definitely don't neglect ever playing with other people. But I think at first, if you just want to push and get your first glad, then it's beneficial to play with the same people for all, all the reasons I just listed. But that's my tip number three. And I definitely follow that one a lot myself. I, a lot of people always ask me to queue and I feel bad saying no, but if it's like, if I already have a main team, I just, I kind of stick with them. You know what I mean? But that's tip number three, so if you put that into motion too, definitely you'll go up. Because consistency is definitely key in this aspect. Okay, tip number two. This one is an important one. I've touched on it a little bit through the course of talking to you about the other ones. So this one is going to be positioning. This one is a hard concept to get your head across, okay? Uh, this, I find, is the difference between 2200 and 2400 players in 2v2s. Threes, um, I, I'm not sure the correlation in threes, but it's definitely really important in threes as well, especially if you're the healer and stuff. But, so positioning. I'll give you guys examples of what I mean by this. So... 2v2, right? You're playing twos. This happens to me all the time. All the time. We're playing twos, right? And I'm with a healer. And so the pillar... The pillar is right here. This is the pillar, right? And then my healer should be on the pillar, right? So my healer is on this side of the pillar. The, their DPS is over here. My healer is right here. He's casting a fear. My healer, he just goes... Zoop, other side of the pillar. Lines the fear. Okay? But say my healer is out here in the middle of the map. There's no way for him to possibly line the fear. And then, oh, the warlock gets the fear because I couldn't kick it that time. And then look, my pally, now he's over here in the middle of the map. And then, oh, but who's that over here? Oh, it's the other team's holy paladin. And then boom. So then he gets feared. And then, oh, now he's in a bad position because the fear, he was in the middle of the map and ate. And then guess what happens next? Now he gets Hodge repped. And then, oh, there's 13, 14 seconds of CC. So just by being out of position, you started a huge CC chain. And because of that CC chain, I had to use, oh, now I had to use AMS. But, oh, it's a, it's a three CC chain. Now I had to use my Lichborn and my Lichborn heal too, right? So now all I have left is, all I have left is IBF and zone. And all they did was one one go that could have easily been avoided. Because the most important thing, WoW is just about trading cooldowns, basically, okay? Trading cooldowns. At the highest rating, if you overlap or you trade the wrong cooldown, like, and when I'm pushing rank one there, when I, if we overlap one time, especially against a rogue mage or something, we instantly lose. 
instantly lose or like a free CC or something instantly lose so basically just if you're it's mostly the healer that this but as a DPS you can put the healer in a bad position so watch that make sure you don't run into the pull out and then your healer has to follow you in the middle of the map and then boom mage blink polys him and then boom there it is there it is but yeah positioning is very important I'm trying to think of another situation for you. Um, okay, here. Here's one one rule of thumb, okay? Uh, this happened to me a while ago. I was fighting a, a shaman team, okay? I was fighting a shaman in 3v3s. There was a, sh a resto shaman on the other team. And my healer kept getting hexed over and over for free. You should never get hexed or never get like a castable CC. It should never be able to be cast on you for free. The only time you should be able to get hexed as a healer or is if they already like stunned you first. Like if they hod you and then the healer hexes you off or like they hod you and then they poly you off or they kidney and poly you off. Like the only time you should get CC'd is if you are already stunned or something. Other than that, your positioning is bad. And you need to stay at the pillar so that whenever there's a CC coming, you can line the CC. Just dip beside the pillar, dip out, line the CC. Sure, maybe once in a while you get CC'd for free. But you really need to not let it happen. You really need to avoid that. Because that will lose more games than anything. Like every time you get CC'd, it costs us a cooldown, right? And then when you run out of cooldowns, you lose. So basically just think of it like that, chat. Or <laughs> I guess it's... Not, sorry, I'm not streaming right now. Habit. But uh... Yeah, just think of it like that. Like, every time you mess up it, your positioning and you get CC'd because of it, it's one cooldown, one to maybe even two, maybe more cooldowns less. Depends how long the CC chain lasts, but that is very, very important, okay? So, make sure you're paying attention to your positioning and the enemy team, and you are lining the CCs. If your DPS are bringing you into a bad position, and they don't notice that, you can just communicate them and say, Guys, this is a bad position. <laughs> this is a bad position. We need to get out of here. Okay. But, like, I, I wish I could show you on the game right behind us right now, but there's not really any b bad positioning going on there. But these are just some random, like, near 3k games I played at the end of the season there. Um, yeah, there won't be any bad positioning, I don't think, in these ones. But, but you just... Mm. Or, like... If you're a DPS, oh yeah, th this goes for the DPS too, okay? If you're a DPS, and uh, let's think. Demon Hunters did this so many times last season, okay? So I would last season I'd bait all the Demon Hunters into, into my chill streak. So they would press their blur on something dumb, right? They, so they have no blur. And then they would always also trinket something. So people watch for this, right? So I'd be like, oh look, the enemy Demon Hunter, he has no trinket and no blur. So... In a stun, he's instantly dead. And then I would just walk behind the pillar. And then the demon hunter follows me behind the pillar and puts himself in a stupid position. And then, boom, stun, one shot, dead. That's it. That's all she wrote. So, with lower rated players, their positioning is very bad. You can take advantage of this a lot. So, what I do is, say, even in twos. So, say it's like a priest's rogue or something. I just slow the priest, and then I just keep bringing the rogue, keep rotating away from the priest. Just keep positioning myself away from the priest, between keeping the pillar between me and the priest. So, what that does is, the priest can't damage us because of his positioning. He can't heal the rogue because of his positioning. And the rogue can get one-shotted randomly because he's not in a position where he can get saved. So, positioning is a very big aspect. Uh, if you want to learn more about positioning, let me know. Maybe I'll make another video just on positioning and explain many different situations about it. Or you can just catch me on the stream and I'll explain it more there. But uh, yeah, definitely do not overlook positioning. A lot of lower rated... I swear, this is the thing lower rated players don't understand. And it's it's a huge important thing. Almost the most important, in my opinion. But yeah, so pay, definitely pay attention to that from now on, okay? And take advantage when people put themselves in a bad position. Especially with the PvE trinkets we have now where you can one-shot so easily, take advantage. Okay guys, and tip number one that I have for you right now. 
So this one is to know your enemy's cooldowns, okay? Because like I said, the most important thing is trading cooldowns properly. So if you don't know when to trade your cooldowns, then how can you possibly do that, right? Like, I'll give you an example. Like, so a lot of things are really scripted, okay? If you don't do them right away, you will instantly lose, okay? Like last season, Warlock, Destro Warlock, Dark Soul. The second the Warlock uses Dark Soul, if I don't use anti-magic zone on us and we're in the open, we're instantly dead because he will two shot you with the, with the chaos bolts instantly two shot you. Okay. And they're like less than a second cast each. So you have to react instantly to the cooldowns that are being used and know the cooldowns. So the first step to this would be to know the cooldowns. Okay. So warlock, dark soul, mage, combustion, warrior avatar like everything that kind of thing all the cooldowns so you're just going to take a look at all the offensive cooldowns okay because a lot of them you, you can't miss like right now in pre-patch the one that you don't want to miss right now in pre-patch is stormkeeper by enhancement or sorry stormkeeper by ellie shamans all right if you do not react the second stormkeeper goes off if you don't use a defensive like anti-magic shell or something or do something CC him, line it, anything. If you don't react when he casts Stormkeeper right now, you are instantly dead. In one second, one global, you're dead. 100 0. There's nothing you can do if you don't react. You can just, if you want to see it happen, just look at my YouTube video, the 2v2 video I just went. It's in the, when I was fighting Smex in an Ab Surge. I didn't use something the second he used it, and I died instantly. So, yeah, you have to know the cooldowns, okay? So, one thing to help you with this though, this is what I use, okay? So I use an add-on called Gladiator Lossa. So what that does is you might hear this on my stream sometimes and people troll because of it, and, but like it's actually crazy beneficial. So you can set it. So you choose the button, the cooldowns that you want and it will announce it. So last season, as soon as a warlock presses Dark Soul, the add-on would say Dark Soul. So I could never miss it. Cause if you miss it for one second, he already cast two bolts and you lose the game. Same with Mage Combustion, like, if I don't zone the healer a second he press Combustion, then the Rogue Mage just kills my healer instantly. So there's a lot of different things like that, that are, that are like, scripted, right? And you need to react instantly as soon as you hear it. Uh, the cooldowns that are overpowered, and that you need to react to instantly, uh, they change from patch to patch sometimes. But, generally, they're the same. So, you just need to do your research, okay? And see what is what you have to respond to instantly. So I'll give you a couple examples though. Dark Soul, Warlock Dark Soul, Mage Combustion, now Icy Veins for Frost Mages, Arcane Power, um, Vendetta, Dark Archangel, all the offensive cooldowns, okay? And you need to just, it comes with practice though, and then you'll know how to respond to each one, okay? In what situation. So you just need to figure out the cooldowns, figure out how to respond to each one and make sure that you do it and you do not miss it. If you could use, if you're like me and you're blind and you just want to hear the cooldowns so you know and you never miss it, Gladiator LOSA is a really good add-on for that. If you want to be more visual, I think you can use weak auras and you can set up so anytime like they use Dark Soul or something, it'll just flash something on your screen and it'll say, Oh, Dark Soul or whatever you want it to say, right? But you need to do something so that you can see the cooldowns that are happening and you can react accordingly, okay? That is my tip number one. Now, I could think of a lot more tips to tell you guys. A lot more tips, like technical things, right? Like macros, keybinds, all the stuff that you guys have probably heard about a million times. Uh, yeah, so I could, I could tell you those. I could tell you, I could think of a lot of different things that are beneficial. Like I teach people through my coaching all the time, but... uh these five that I told you today, those should definitely, if you put those all into action, you critically think about those and you apply them to your gameplay and your mindset, you will improve a lot <laughs> significantly. Other than it, other than these things, it's a lot of just technical things, but these things, like I said, like positioning, I could go a lot deeper into these things. There's a lot of situations I couldn't explain to you here in this short video, but if you guys want to know about that kind of thing, you can let me know and I'll definitely help you out. Um, other than that, I think that's all for today, guys. So you can catch me on twitch.tv slash partywafflesx. 
Uh, every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is my current schedule, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. And you can also find me on Twitter, Instagram. And yeah, I think that's it for today. If you guys got any, like I said, any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, I think, yeah, just leave a like, subscribe, and have a good one, everybody.